Hello, welcome to Five Minutes of Torah with the B.I. Rabbi. I'm Rabbi Adam Stein. You can see I'm being safe. I have my mask on. Well, actually, I'm in my office by myself, so I think I can probably take it off. Got a nice hanging around my neck lanyard there. The homemade one from someone in Vancouver. And it's nice to be back at the shul. I've been back here a few weeks now. I was on a little break recently. Uh, back in the office, got my rabbi sign there with license plates. Uh, you know, just last night I was I was reading a story to my son. Well, he wanted me to read him a story, and I was reading something from the newspaper that was for kids about Mars and a little crossword puzzle for kids. But I said, Eli, maybe I could read to you Harry Potter. You ever heard of Harry Potter? You sort of heard of it. So I, I got, I downloaded a sample of the, the first book, and I started to read, and after a page or two, he said, uh, Abba, I haven't understood a word you said. So I think uh, following on for, along with chapter books, maybe will come a little bit later for him. I thought maybe the Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe, he wasn't so interested in that either. Very few pictures. But here in our Torah portion this week, our weekly Torah portion, Parashat uh, Chukat and Balak, uh, we, we have a story of a, um, of a wizard, a magician. It reminded me of Harry Potter, actually. His name is Bil'am in the Torah, or Balaam. And it's a story that has a bit of intrigue, some deception, some intense back and forth between Bil'am and the king, Balak, who hires him, and even has a talking donkey. You know what? Well, this sounds like a pretty nice story. Maybe I should read this one to my son. Maybe he'll get this one. Well, yes, I did say a talking donkey, by the way. Bil'am keeps yelling at and even hitting his donkey because he's not doing what he wants. And finally, the donkey speaks up and says, hey, haven't I been be a good donkey to you all these years? What are you hitting me for? It's really a great scene. Yet, now, somehow, in the end, this story actually isn't about Bilam's relationship with his donkey or his relationship with the, his boss, King Balak. It's really about his relationship with God. Somehow, this non-Israelite sorcerer, this wizard, has a direct face-to-face -face relationship with our God, yud heh vav -Hey, whom we call Adonai. And he even has to ask permission of God when he's asked to curse the Jewish people. God says, well, no, you, you can't do that. You can't curse them. He, but he keeps pushing and pushing against God's desires. When God says no, he pushes again. And finally, God says, okay, you can go with the Balak's men who tried to hire you, but you can only say what I tell you. Then the angel appears in front of Bilam and his donkey. And Bilam doesn't see him. The angel tries to turn away. We have the talking scene, the hitting scene. He finally gets past the talking donkey scene. And even then, he can't curse us properly, the Israelites. Every time he tries to curse us, God puts blessings into his mouth instead of curses. So Balak, who tried, to, who hired Bilam to curse, not bless the Israelites, gets more and more frustrated. And finally, after several rounds of, I told you to curse them, not bless them, Bilam gives one of the most famous blessings of all, ironically given by a foreign wizard, the Matovu line from the beginning of our morning, morning prayers. Matovu, Matovu, Oh Halecha Yaakov, Mishkenotecha Yisrael. You can imagine Bill Am looking out from this mountaintop with Balak right next to him, who hired him to curse the Jewish people. He sees these tents and he says, uh, "How how beautiful are your tents, O oh Jacob? How." How wonderful uh, and lovely are your dwelling places, Israel. So what do we learn from Bil'am besides don't hit your donkey? Well, I'm not so big on destiny and fate and everything was designed to be this way or that way, but I do know that sometimes we can't run away from who we are. Bil'am had this relationship with our God, who, the one God, who told him that he needed to be a blesser, not a curser of the Israelites. And he ran and ran and ran, just like Jonah, but eventually he needed to do the right thing and be himself. So may we all. Actually brings us right back to Harry Potter, who couldn't run away from who he was either. I want to tell you about one thing coming up before I go. Tisha B'Av is coming our, our very sad holiday in the middle of each summer. Uh, the past three years we've done it with other conservative schools in the area. So we're doing Tisha B'Av again, once again with uh, Beth, Tikva, Beth Tikva and Harel. Uh, three shuls in our box, Boxer Family Plaza outside at our shul, uh, up to 40 people in person. Everyone else, of course, is welcome on Zoom. It'll be done both ways, in person and online, July 29th at 8 p.m. Look on our website and our emails for more information. Shabbat Shalom.